Hey, hello, welcome. I'm going to show you with the best of my abilities the most efficient ways I've found to get static meshes from Blender into Unreal Engine without using any plugins at all. If you're interested in doing it with plugins, click the boy up in the, uh, the top right here and it's going to give you a card that explains how to do it with the new fancy Blender to Unreal plugin that they developed. Um, but this one's just about vanilla, okay? Also, like, there's a few things that, I explained this in the intro, there's a few things that involve exporting that I have to go over before I go over the exporting part. Uh, that's why there's timestamps. Yeah, you can skip around if you need to. Um, but just, if you watch the whole video in its entirety, it should explain everything. Uh, you, you can probably work along with me with some of this, but for some of it, you're just gonna kinda have to let it sink into your head. Uh, let's get started. So there's four big things you have to worry about when exporting into Unreal Engine. The first one is scale, the second one's collision, the third one is materials, and the fourth one is light map. So we're gonna go over all of those. Let's get started. So let's first worry about scale. This used to be a huge issue, pun intended, and it's not so bad now. The best way to know how to export things to the correct scale is to keep in mind one of these little squares here is 100 units in Unreal Engine, and you, you can uh, see that in Unreal Engine. If you go in here, this is the default Blender cube. Uh, if you set your scale to 100 and snapping on, you can see it takes two movements to move it up because a default cube in Blender is two of those squares around. So that's the biggest thing you want to keep in mind. Also, in Unreal Engine, the uh, UE4 mannequin here, he's about 180 centimeters or 180 Unreal Engine units tall. Um, a unit in Unreal Engine is a centimeter, but for those of you that use freedom units, it may be easier to think of this in Unreal Engine units, lest you be converted to the superior measurement method. Double check that you have these export settings set up in Blender. If you go to File, Export, FBX, we use FBXs here because we like uh, ourselves. And just make sure that the scale is set to one in Blender. That's basically all you have to do. Uh, you can also go over here to this little scene properties doohickey and uh, make sure that your unit system is either set to none or metric. That's gonna make it easier for you to see these boxes. Uh, none and metric are the same thing. And Imperial sets it to inches or feet. Don't do this. Everybody will hate you. Everybody you work with will hate you. The whole game development world uses metric. Just use metric. Okay, moving on. Collision. This part's surprisingly straightforward. The only confusing part is convex shapes. And to understand what that is, if you failed high school geometry like I did, uh, I made a footnote for you to understand what programs recognize as convex shapes. That should be up here in the top right right now. Uh, if you don't care, then don't click on it. But if you wanna know how to make those correctly, go ahead and click that. Cool, okay. So the thing with collisions is they're inaccurate, they're picky, and they're easy to make. You've got two options here. Either completely ignore it, you make your shape whatever you want. We've got this nice little boy here. Neat. We've got a, we've got some stupid rocket, whatever. Um, so one option for this is I'm, I'm just gonna export here. And you will see if uh, once you've exported this, it has, if you hit Alt-C, collisions. Um, I didn't do anything, all I did was import it, and it has a collision mesh. Most of the time, this is fine, um, but if you want to make your own, I'll show you how. Basically, all you need to do is duplicate your object. I'm going to rename this to weird rocket thing. Duplicate your object and rename it to the exact same name, it has to be the exact same, and just type in ucx underscore as the prefix, and that's going to make a collision object. When you import this to Unreal, when you select both of them to import them, it's gonna work. It's gonna import this as a collision object. However, collision objects in Unreal can only be convex shapes. So uh, one of your options for this is select your weird rocket thing collision, and just make a box and just kind of like roughly make it overlap this and if we select both of them and export it 
you'll notice that the collision object we brought in works. Now, you can only have one shape, it all has to be connected, and it has to be a convex shape. This is confusing, so if you don't know what a convex shape is, click the footnote in the top right. If your collision isn't importing properly, do that. If you're lazy, like me, do this. Select the geometry in your UCX and do convex hull. And you've created a hull. Now if you export these, which you should not be doing yet because there's a lot more we have to talk about, um, you've got your new collision object and it's the same as the one in Blender as you can see there. Now, you're not gonna need to do this most of the time. The easiest thing to do is just go down here to convex decomposition and hit apply and it's, it's gonna make one for you, and 90% of the time, it's gonna be better than the one Blender generates because it's gonna let you have different hulls. Hulls are like the separate objects, so if we wanted two hulls on this, this is a hull, and this is a hull. It's confusing, it's annoying, and it's explained in the footnote video. Go there if you need to see it. This is just how to export your existing convex object, if you understand that. So let's say you've got these and you want to make a wall with a window, okay? This is not something that you can really do without being super finicky in Blender. This is something that you should really do inside Unreal Engine's collision generator. But if you want super accurate collisions, you'll have to do it yourself. But Unreal's collision generation is pretty good for this kind of thing. It's not always great, but it's fine. You just have to kind of understand what to do here and play around with the collision settings and eventually you'll get something you want. But I will explain how to do this properly if you want accurate collisions inside of the footnote. Again, click, click the card if you wanna know. Cool, okay, so what about materials? What if I want a material to be automatically applied to these objects? when I'm inside Unreal Engine, so I don't have to go in here and type in red grid every time I import something. Is that feasible? Yes, thank you for asking. Cool, this is really easy, okay? The first thing you have to do is add a material to your object, and it has to have the exact same name in Unreal Engine as it does in Blender. It doesn't matter if the actual material in Blender is the same, it just has to be named the same in Blender. So we go over to wherever your material is located. I'm gonna hit F2. I'm gonna copy this and bring it back over here. Paste in the name. That's it. That's all you need to do inside Blender and it will just work. So if I export this and then I come into Unreal Engine, there are a few options you have to click on the importer, which you should not do yet because it will ruin the linear progression of this tutorial. You just have to go down here, and this material section here, you need to check all assets, and don't create materials, and do not import textures. This is checked by default, I believe. Just uncheck it. And then when you import, it's got the, it's got the red grid material just on it, because it knew that that name was the same as this. It does it instantly, it's fine. It's great, that's it. It saves you so much time, it's so simple. Please implement this into your workflow. This also works amazing with Quixel materials because you don't wanna import a Quixel texture every single time you import a new mesh. It defeats the purpose of using materials in Blender and Unreal Engine because the whole idea with using materials is it cuts down on memory cost. It is worth noting at this point if you have a shape in Unreal Engine that has one material and you go in here and you change it, it's going to load the default shape material as well as that new one you put on. So if I had this cube and its default material is a basic shape material and I'm thinking, hmm, I want the red grid material here, it's gonna load both. It's gonna put both into memory. Sometimes this is unavoidable with things like the cube. And that's why they use incredibly basic materials on these. They take up almost no memory space 
and the world grid material and the basic shape material, they're always in memory anyway. But if you've got an 8K water texture on your window for some dumb reason, and you're like, hmm, I want this to be a red grid now, that 8K material is always going to be in memory. You don't want that. That's bad for you. That's bad for me. That's bad for your players. It's bad for everything. This is material bloat. Do not do this. Okay. Let's deal with light maps. Now I know, I know, light maps scary. No, I swear they're not. If your materials look like this when lighting is built, this is all you need to do. It's super fast, it's super easy, and I'm gonna show you in like 10 seconds how to do this, okay? Go into Blender, grab your material. Now this happens when you have a bunch of overlapping materials. If you have your UV map and it looks like this, and it's normal, there's nothing overlapping. Actually, there's something overlapping there. But but let's say you have a normal UV map. It's completely perfect, there's no unwrapping. You don't need to do this. But let's say your UV map looks like this. Now this happens a lot when you're running a mirror modifier, things like that. So one side of the mesh will have the same UV maps as the other side. It's avoidable, but sometimes you just don't have the time. And let's face it, we're poor, we're indie devs, we don't have any money. I don't have time for that. So the easiest thing to do for this, if you're in this situation, is come over here to UV maps, make a new one, name it light map. It doesn't matter, do whatever you want. And just in this one, which is going to be only your light map, just hit smart UV project and that's it. You're still gonna have this one. It's still gonna unwrap properly for textures, but this is going to be the light map. So I'm just gonna export this and now I've imported both. I showed you the one that had a really bad UV map, and this is the one with the second light map unwrap, the UV map. Uh, and you can see that really easily by coming in here, going to UV channel one, and you can see the light map right here. Now Unreal's actually generated this already, uh, but if it doesn't, what you need to do is come down here to LOD zero, open up build settings, and just set these both to one. These are the light map indexes, the UV map index that it uses for the light map. It's zero based, so your default texture one's gonna be zero. And then one is going to be the light map that you use. I'm, I'm not sure why it's done this. Um, say la vie, it's just Unreal Engine, it does what it wants. And also, you can come down here to the expanded settings in general settings, and ah, that's why it's done it. Just change this to one. It's gonna overwrite the default UV map for the light map, and it's gonna set it to the new one once you hit apply changes up here in LOD zero. So you can see that change there. Don't use Blender's light map unwrap. It sucks, it's awful. Okay, so I'm gonna build lighting really quick. I'm gonna show you here. This one has a really bad UV map. No, it doesn't, it's perfect. We're not gonna talk about this. All right. Light map complete. Now you'll see here, there's a couple issues on this one. This is the bad one. This is the good one. And we'll come in here and actually they look, they both look pretty good. This one's bad, the one that we didn't do anything with. Yeah, this is the kind of thing I'm talking about. Somehow Unreal has managed to decant the material and make it look good. I don't really know why. Um, but this is obviously bad. So this is why you would want to kind of separate those meshes and light map it properly. Looks good. You can see the shadows along the edge. This one looks a tiny bit better, but yeah, you get the idea. Just, uh, just be diligent. Okay, now I've been doing this all video, but now I'm actually going to explain it. This is the exporting section. I like FBX files. Most people that use Unreal use FBX files. They have the largest amount of data transferred between Blender and Unreal Engine. Unreal likes them, so we're gonna use FBX files. You can use OBJs if you're crazy, but please use FBX files. Also, I highly recommend setting up a hotkey for exporting in Blender. And the way you do that is you just come over here, file, export, FBX, and right click on it and change your shortcut. Uh, and it'll bring up this dialogue that you can, uh, a shortcut, it's very nice. Okay, so I'm gonna be doing it without the shortcut, but you should do that. Okay, so important step here, take your mesh you want to export and select it. If you have a collision object, you need to select it too. So just hold shift and you can select both of them there. Uh, it doesn't matter which one is primarily selected, but I like to select the first one. And go over here to file, hit export, click on FBX, 
And there's a couple settings over here you're going to want to watch out for. The biggest ones are make sure selected objects is clicked off, is checked. Um, down here, Unreal Engine likes to use negative Y forward and Z up or Z. Uh, it's not super important for static meshes, but you should get in the habit because it makes static meshes, or it makes scalable meshes pretty grumpy if you don't do that. So uh, just, just keep that in mind. I like using normals only. I believe it j defaults to this. Uh, you can use faces or edges, but normals only seems to generate the best kind of shading effects that I like. Um, you'll have to play around with it. It's different for everybody's use case. And uh, that's it. So go ahead, export this. Pick whatever name you like. Uh, these settings are useful, but only for skeletons. So don't, don't worry about it right now. After you've hit export, go over to Unreal. And you're gonna come in, now this is the exciting part. This is the part that I've been skipping over this whole video. Go to import, click your new thing you want to import. And a lot of these settings are going to default to what you need them to default to. One of the things, if uh, if you're scaling, is like the size of a mountain, just change this to one if it's not. In here, you're gonna wanna make sure combined meshes isn't checked most of the time. Sometimes you're gonna want it checked. It's weird, Unreal defaults to weird stuff. Um, just make sure all of these are the same. Generate light map UVs is good to have checked off. Auto generate collision is good to have checked off. This doesn't overwrite your collision that we did. You'll see that in a second. And uh, just come down here and hit import. And you will see that this window cube came in and it's even got the collision that we selected for it inside Blender. So it's good. Uh, everything is working. Everything is fine. And uh, that's it. Another cool thing about this workflow is uh, if you decide you want, hey, I've got this window thing here, but I want it to have a big doohickey thing on the top here. Uh, you could just go ahead and do this and then export it again to new window cube, the same name. And you can go ahead and just re-import this and boom, there it goes. Uh, it's gonna reset any light map changes you do, and if you're auto-generating collisions, it's gonna re-auto-generate collisions. So best to keep in mind that you should have your mesh finished and be happy with it before you do this, um, just so you're not resetting it and you have to do it again and waste your time. Uh, let's be honest, we as artists are never happy with our work. So just like, it's, it's, I'm, I'm giving you advice, but I, I mean, I don't follow my own advice. I always re-import stuff and have to do it over. And uh, yeah, it, it is what it is. All right, so you're done. You have everything that you need to import meshes. I've taught you everything there is to teach you as of November, 2020, about exporting static meshes manually into Unreal. The next video is going to be using the Unreal Engine Blender to Unreal plugin add-on. Uh, it's, it's an add-on in Blender. You don't have to do anything Unreal Engine. I know plugins are scary in Unreal, but uh, they're pretty easy to deal with in, uh, in Blender. So the next video is going to go over that. There's also going to be the footnote about the convex shapes, and that's it. So here you go. here again huh mm, I get it sometimes it's just nice to kick back watch some tutorials and enjoy some hot cocoa live your life dude